Jolly, Jolly, good morning to you. Welcome to TMI Socials, where we talk everything trendy on the social media space. I am Anne Wulua Poor Stevens. Better still call me your social media butterfly. So over the weekend, the former governor of Ogun State was in the news as a result of the situation surrounding the seized presidential jet. Well, former Governor Ibukule Amosu on Saturday said he was deceived into handling over a free trade facility in Ogun State to an investment group from China, introducing a disturbing dimension to the ongoing legal battle that threatened the depletion of Nigeria's assets abroad. Well, Mr. Amosu, a governor of the southern, a former governor of the southwestern Nigerian state from 2011 to 2019, admitted in a statement personally signed by him that he didn't do even an assessment of facts before asking a Chinese team to take over the Godel Free Trade Zone in 2012. And his decision marked the onset of a protracted, long legal crisis that led to aggrieved Chinese investors' recent targeting of Nigeria's assets in Europe. Europe and the United States. So over the weekend, hashtag mistakenly was trending and it was as a result of this particular story. Well, he did say that he did not do an even assessment, you know, of facts as regards this particular issue. But let's take your comment on social media. Now, this user says, you should be mistakenly in jail by now or you should be mistakenly in jail by now that's what he's saying from Ola another reaction would be from this guy he says hmm mistakenly signed away Ogu multi-billionaire to dubious Chinese investor says Ibu Kunle Amosu where was the then state attorney general and solicitor general who ought to liaise with AGF to take out any trash in the contract oftentimes many governors see themselves as invincible he says another take would be from daniel he says ignorance is no excuse especially coming from a whole state governor he should also mistakenly resign and face the law the audacity he says now away from that now let's talk the fuel scarcity situation as there was a trending video from hashtag nmd PRA and it was actually posted on their X handle. They said the downstream regulators said it had declared a war against the illegal sale of petroleum products. Now NMDPRA embarks on a war against the illegal sale of petroleum products, especially PMS in jerry cans. So filling stations are advised to desist from servicing illegal peddlers or failure to do so would result in the suspension of retail licenses. Well, let's hear them verbatim. Uh, you need to take it very seriously. If you need security reinforcement, speak to your management. We will tell them. Our own understanding is that you're selling this from here. There is no other place that they manufacture it from. You understand? So please take this very serious. So this is a forewarning that from tomorrow, if we see peddlers and not ask any question, oh, do we? Okay? Please take it very serious. It's putting safety concerns on Nigeria. Now let's see how Nigerians have been reacting to this because I feel there's a mix up as regards the news. So they said it's a like crackdown on, you know, persons who sell premium motor spirits and jerry cans to the black market guys. But Nigerians took it upon themselves to react to the fact that, oh, you said we should no longer buy, you know, fuel and jerry cans. Now here's what comrade Olajide had to say. Why not address the reason people are buying fuel in kegs, a scarcity of PMS and erratic of power supply? Um, these people are so disconnected from the realities of the average Nigerian. How are people expected to power their agents if they don't sell in kegs? question indeed another reaction still on the story let us see what we have now joshua says this is beautiful i'm so happy for this development interesting one more take 
One more take from another social media user. Emmanuel says, if there is PMS available in stations, nobody will patronize the roadside sellers. If there is power supply, no one will need fuel in, ca in cans for generators. So your agency should focus on providing enough fuel with enough goods to sell in any market. There can't be scarcity. Simple and short. Away from that, now our Vice President Kashim Shatima was trending over the course of the weekend because of a particular tweet that emanated from him. Now let's have that tweet on. Well, in a nation where the cost of living, you know, continues to skyrocket, Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shatima recently made a statement that's left many Nigerians in shock and disbelief. So he says, and I quote, that's it there, he says, 8,000 Naira can change the life of a youth who knows what he is doing. Now the question is Nigerian youth, do you know what you are doing? If you do, 8,000 Naira is sure for you. I mean, you could just work with that. And of course, social media users dragged the hell out of this particular quote. So let's have reactions to the story. This user says, he is very right now. 8,000 Naira can start a good business in Nigeria and you will save the rest for the business maintenance and support for yourself. I feel this guy has just been sarcastic right here. Habibi of Abuja says, why are you not receiving 16,000 Naira as your salary, being that you are an adult? Why do you need all that millions for a country that is as bad as Nigeria with so much inflation and employment, low GDP? You're coming out to give some old, unrealistic ideas. Now, one more time. Take. Let's have one more reaction on this particular one from this guy. And he says, but you used how much to renovate your villa? He is asking. Well, interesting times as always on social media. As we move over to my final story for you for today, it will be a trending video from Pastor Ie Adeboye, where he said he was talking about having a recount of how an anointed handkerchief from his church resurrected an 11-day-old dead buddy. Take a listen. A young man was working in Lagos and then they told him his sister died in the east of Nigeria and uh, he told them please don't bury her yet. I will get permission from my place of work so I can come and be there. By the time he got permission was able to arrive the woman had been dead for 11 days. They, have, they, they embalmed her and kept her in the house. But he had an handkerchief that had been anointed by us. And he entered carrying the baby of the woman who died because the woman had a little child before she died. Enter the room, lay the handkerchief on her, command it, command you. Now, of course, trust the netizens to have their take on everything on social media. But let's get the reaction of this particular video. Now, this user says, go and resurrect the bad economy that you yourself endorsed and never spoke out when all this inflation is going on. And then legend Papi says, Nigeria pastors do miracle. Pass Jesus Christ. Praise God. <laughs> then this user, Young Emmanuel, says, some people will still doubt this. I believe him because even in the Bible, Bible, when the woman with the issue of blood touched the garment of Jesus, she received her healing. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So, well, reaction still trailing on the story. Now, this user Ashake says, You for don't help us with Mobad. Tell me about it. Well, is that all we have on this particular one? If we could have another reaction, maybe. Okay, well, um, as always, I would say interesting times on social media. Sunny Duke, which of the stories would you love to react to? Yeah, I think the uh, stories that bothers on uh, the vice president talking about 8,000 Naira is enough, and then uh, see the reactions that are actually feeling it. Hmm. The truth of the matter is that if uh, the perquisites of office are also lucrative and so attractive, many of the people who are in the corridors of power today will be disinterested. And that's why a lot of people are advocating for us to have a situation wherein 
you want to be a member of the National Assembly, you should be on allowances, not like we're seeing now. Hmm. Uh, one person taking home about 21 million on a monthly basis, and then there's somebody earning 70,000. I mean, the inequality is or so maybe strong. we just end the 70K, all the first together, <laughs> you know, so everybody would be happy. All right, that's our package today. Thank you so much. Uh, good job, as Thanks always. For having uh, me. On the show today, TMI. We hope you had a great time with us on all the segments. Uh, Business Rendezvous is next with uh, Daisy right after this time. Have a great week ahead.